Cheers. Go up. What really gets me, the pre rathers say we go up and we kind of just hang out for a little while and then come back down. I don't know if it's days or weeks later. What really gets me is the post trippers because they say we go like up, down. And we don't have time to present the pre trib rapture, but I believe in the imminent rapture, which is pre tribulational. We go up at the beginning of the. Uh, before God begins that 70th week under law. Again, the 70th week, if you get that straight, that it's the Mosaic Covenant, it's law, there was no church in the 69 weeks, there's not going to be a church of Jesus Christ in the 70th week either. There'll be a fake church, the Laodicean church, but there won't be a true church. The Laodicean church, Jesus is on the outside knocking to get in. The true church of Jesus Christ, Jesus is in you and in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that's, there's some, many other reasons why we know that the church is not there during that last seven-year period of law. But look over at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. And I'll have you jump in the even verses again with this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. But if you attend church where they don't teach the Bible, you will be ignorant. Yeah. If you don't read your own Bible, you'll be ignorant. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Someone dies, if I die and you're still all around, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the fact that people shed tears when someone dies. When Lazarus died, Jesus was just about to raise him from the dead and he still wept. But he didn't weep without hope. And that's the difference between believers. If someone dies and they're in Christ, you know you're going to see them again. So you grieve, but not as others which have no hope. Verse 14, read it. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again... Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now look at that. These are people who say that when a Christian dies, they go into the grave and they sleep. And they say it's soul sleep. And they're unconscious. And they don't know what's going on. The Bible says that when they died, they went to be with Jesus. And that's why he's bringing them back with him. It doesn't say he comes back and pulls them up out of the grave. And then they're with him. When he comes back with them, we're going to see he pulls their body up out of the grave, but they're not there, only their bodies are. Verse 15 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, the dead will go up a millisecond before you do. And I don't buy the nonsense. I think it's nonsense. The guys out there teaching... They're going to be like 40 days where, you know, it's almost like a zombie thing where people are going to rise out of the graves and walk around for 40 days and all that. Yeah, it's out there. They get it by taking things totally out of their context and applying it. I think it's going to be in a twinkling of an eye. Verse uh, 16, read it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So it doesn't say there's going to be a 40-year, uh, a 40-day, uh, you know, difference. It just says the dead in Christ rise first, then we which are alive and remain. When? After they rise. Not days later, not 40 days later. They go up. I've heard some people say, you know, Christians who are alive and remain, we're going to run out to the graves and see the graves open and get all excited and go around preaching the gospel and a bunch of people are going to get saved. Hogwash. <laughs> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet, they're, they're, they're not just going to rise and walk around. They rise and go to the clouds. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, read it, wherefore comfort one another with these words. That's quite a comfort, isn't it? So we go up, and this is before the tribulation period, and then we come back down at the end of the tribulation period in Revelation 19, 
beginning in verse 11. Turn there while I'm reading. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Read verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Now stop there, I love that. No man knows but he himself. Uh, verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Read, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us. We, and it's, it's us for various reasons, but it's not the angels. Uh, the angels don't ride white horses anywhere in Scripture. And that says clothed in fine linen, white and clean, that is a picture of, it's just like baptism is a picture of your salvation and you profess it to the world when you're baptized. Well, we're not going to be a bunch of streak, streakers through, through eternity. Um, we're going to have clothes on. And the clothes just happen to be of fine linen, white and clean, because we are washed in the blood of the Lamb, we are now white as snow. And we have the righteousness of Christ, spiritually speaking, and it will manifest in a physical, visual sense whenever we are in heaven. Uh, Doug made a comment about how I was dressed, and I, I don't know what he thought. It looked like I'd just come out of prison or something. I don't know. But... And, but uh, this is gray and, you know, kind of an olive gray. I don't know what these pants are. Uh, and uh, uh, I can't remember the thrift store, but no, this, I've had this a long time. Pants Costco. But anyway, uh, you know, we talk about the clothes a lot. And, you know, we, we ladies talk about it more than men. Um, but we, even the men talk about clothes and everything. In heaven, we're not going to care. We're, not gonna, we're going to all have white. And even in the fall, we're going to all wear white. Like Tulsi Gabbard. Like Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> you know, that's a thing. You're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day. Yeah, that's a rule. If you break that rule, some tall, skinny, anorexic model is liable to come up and slap you. <laughs> In heaven, we'll be like monk, <laughs> wearing the same thing all the time. Or we'll be like Matlock. He always had that, uh, we call it a uh, uh, seer sucker suit, they call it. <laughs> and he, he went out and bought a brand new suit, and it looked exactly the same, you know. <laughs> uh, verse 15, though, we continue. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, read verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Some people get mad at me because I had, you know, crack jokes at inopportune times, I guess. But, uh, you know, the good thing is, during the millennium, those people will get a sense of humor. We're going to have a very serious time at the time of the return of Jesus Christ. We're going to watch Jesus kill a bunch of people. That's what the second coming is all about. He's going to save some people too. But he's going to kill the Antichrist, the false prophet, and everybody who took the mark of the beast. Dead. Cast into a lake of fire. It's going to be something. But I believe during the millennium we're going to have a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a real good time. And in Revelation 20, there it starts out, you know, it's real serious there. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he, uh, read verse 2, and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up 
and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. But I, I don't know. I, I, it doesn't say right here. But I kind of expect that when he's cast into the pit for a thousand years, it's going to be a big celebration. A big hurrah. Verse 4, read that. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, I believe the uh, it says... Um, I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them is one group of people and I saw is another group of people. And I believe the first half is us. Why? Because Paul said we're going to judge. We're going to judge angels. And so I believe that first part of verse 4 is us during that millennium. Now, people who have served the Lord faithfully will be in the uh, federal uh, circuit court and federal court of appeals and that level. Some Christians are going to be, uh, you know, in the county uh, taking care of people who, you know, had a disagreement over a water bill or something. Like yeah. Don't be a Barney Fife. <laughs> You're going to... That's for real. During the millennium, some people are going to be given higher places of, as judges, I think there's going to be, uh, um, they're going to have rule over um, nations and over cities and over, you know, neighborhoods or whatever you want to call it. That's all part of it. I also want to say this. I don't know why some men want to teach that you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. Do you know that? John MacArthur taught it. And I'm not going to say that there's another person who taught it, but I think he rescinded it later. Um, but there is another well-known preacher I heard teaching it. And you miss the rapture, you just hear this. You miss the rapture, you better be ready to die Amen. and not take that mark. Because you take the mark of the beast, you're, there's eternal security for the believer now eternally secure going to heaven. There's also eternal security during the tribulation period. You take the mark, you're damned. Eternally. So, uh, it goes on to say in verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Read verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power and they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So you have the church saints and then you also have those who, um, well, we'll come to that in a second. There's the two groups we covered thus far, the Old Testament saints and the church age saints. And then tribulation survivors. So I, I meant to put the, tag that as with the church age saints, those who died during the tribulation period. Um, will be part of the Old Testament saints. I, I guess I did say that. I did. Okay, I made that clear. Yeah, those who die during the 70th week are the other group that we just read about. There's the church age saints, and then there's tribulation saints who die during that tribulation. And then there are those who survive. This is where it gets a little hard for people to believe, but we are in glorified bodies. The Old Testament saints, and the, and the, including those tribulation saints that were beheaded and killed, are in glorified bodies. But then there's mortals, just like we are now, who survived the tribulation. Look at Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 31. I'll start with 31. You jump in the even verses. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, this is the second coming, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. That's the beginning of the millennium. Read verse 32. 
And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now the nations are gathered, but this is, these are individuals, and people who have taken the mark are the goats. And uh, verse 33, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand. That's why uh, good Christian conservatives are right-wingers, you know. But the goats, this is the Democrats, on the left. Read verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. There's that kingdom we were just reading about. And he's telling the right wingers they can come in. Verse 35. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Now, I believe this is directly related to the fact that the uh, believers helped the Jews and helped other, other believers. I don't believe it's just helping the Jews, but I, I, there are some who teach that. But I believe Jesus is in you as a believer. Well, in the Revelation, you remember, he puts his seal upon people. And I believe those are the believers. And so, uh, verse 36, continue. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And that's where some people specifically say this is talking about how they treated the Jews and Israel. I do believe that, but I believe it's also believers who have not taken the mark. And uh, there are going to be people who have uh, you know, helped out the Jews and helped out other believers, give them food. I guess a big deal will still be toilet paper, you know. You don't have the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy toilet paper. Uh, look at Mark 13. And this is, uh, we have a message online about the tribulation saints. And Jesus says, go and read it if you're with me. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Now I'll stop there. Joel three, uh, uh, Joel is it? Joel two talks about this, and it's, it's about the tribulation period coming to an end when Jesus returns, and he says, "And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken." This is all what's going to happen when Jesus comes back. Read verse twenty six, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Isn't that going to be something? And verse 27 says, And then shall he send his angels, and look at this, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And we did that study in Mark 13, and we talked about how even in the Old Testament there are references to this, where God is going to come and take them from wherever they are and bring them back into the land for his kingdom age. So you have Old Testament saints from the fall to the resurrection and the tribulation saints that are killed, martyred. Those are all Old Testament saints. Church age saints from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We talked about this. You go to John 21. Before Pentecost, Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on. They received the Holy Spirit. And on Pentecost, the church wasn't born. And on Pentecost, there were 3,000 added to the church. And so from the time of the resurrection until the rapture, 
church age saints, and then what we just read, tribulation survivors. And those are the people who from among them, the earth will be populated. There will be billions of people. Uh, a very interesting thing, if you watch it online about the, uh, uh, what we're, we were watching, I think it was Answers in Genesis. Um, and he was talking about, um, it was a, a live stream, Ken Ham, and I can't remember the fellow's name. But anyway, he was showing a map, and they kind of use a hotspot map where they show you where population is. Most of the earth is empty. Now, it just tells you the kind of propaganda garbage we've got in school and on TV when they talk about overpopulation. Most of America is empty. And uh, massive amounts of land where no one even lives. There's places we've, we don't have any record of human e beings even going there yet. And during the millennium, they'll cover the earth. And because Jesus is in charge, no one's going to run out of toilet paper. <laughs> not going to have food shortages. Not going to have any problem taking care of all those people. But they will be mortal, so they will have to go to the bathroom. And if they sin, it'll be so hard, so difficult to sin that if you do, you'll die. And if you die at the age of 100, they'll talk about you like you were a child. Say, what a shame. He's only 100 years old. Yeah, we're going to look, I'll back all this stuff up when we do the actual study of millennium. I'm just giving you a little idea of what's to come during that millennial age. And that's because there are mortals there. It's not us. It's not the Old Testament saints. But there are mortals going into that thousand years. And they uh, then at the end... A massive number of them are going to attack Jesus. They're going to surround the whole city. You and I be a part of that somewhere, somehow. You know what we're going to do? Mark's going to look at somebody and say, hmm, Watch this. <laughs> and Jesus, by the word of his mouth, they all drop dead. As church age saints, we will look at our millennial rewards in our next study, charting the end times. But now we know the kingdom is described for us in numerous places in the Bible that we've been reading. And I want to close with one more Revelation 20. And we read the first uh, six verses. We're going to pick up in verse 7. I'll read verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Read with me. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now let's say something. It says Gog and Magog. There's more than one Gog and Magog war in the Bible. I've had people say, well, Ezekiel 37 38, that's talking about Armageddon at the end of Revelation because it says Gog and Magog there. And I'm like, you know, there was a war in Germany. The whole world went to war against Germany. And it happened in like 1914 and there about 1917, 18. Yeah. And then there was a war and it began in the late, uh, 30s, uh, went to about, what, 1945? So it, obviously that was the same war. Because it was the world against Germany, right? So it was just one war, right? See how dumb that is? That's how dumb it is to say that the Gog Magog War in Ezekiel is exactly the same thing as this. It's not. And there's, we've got a study on that, and we'll tell you all the reasons in that study why it's not. But... That's what we were referring to just a minute ago, and it continues. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, look at this, and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, which is Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Read verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne 
and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. <clears throat> and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And read for 15 with me. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you're saved today, what we've been studying is your future. If you're not saved and you die in your sins, verse 15 is your future. And that's how simple it is. This millennial kingdom we're talking about is our real home. We've got a gutter about, you know, coming off the house. We had sound like a mouse in our wall, and we had to go out and fill cracks in to keep the mice out. And, you know, we, we'd like to have a little bigger area on the back and, you know, all this stuff. And the fence need painted, and we about killed ourselves painting that last year. And, you know, and she's, got, she's talking today about, oh, we're going to have to cut the grass now. It's going about time to cut the grass and all this stuff. Man, I can't wait till we get in our real home. Ain't going to be anything like that going on. And that's the question. I just want to close with that question. Are you laying up treasures for your real home? If it's all about this, you're carnal, you're fleshly, you're not walking in the Spirit. If it's all about that home that is going to come down out of God from heaven, the mother of us all, New Jerusalem, then you got the right frame of mind. There are many places in the Bible where God says... Is, you know, as the sand of the sea, like there, or various. And I guess, um, do you have any thoughts on exactly what he means by that? I just think it, like a, he's he's using it to picture the number of people. Like I said, there's going to be tens of billions of people on the planet, and a huge number of those are going to rebel. If, if it's even just fifty percent then that's billions of people and they're going to surround Jerusalem and so from a distance they're just going to look like you would look at a beach and see sand we were reading in Matthew 25 about uh, I was naked and I was in prison we use that, that in our prison ministry well, it's a bit out of context uh, if, you, if you don't explain it but well, because the context isn't about you have a prison ministry right now. Well, well, but you can say that... Jesus, he, uh, I'm just talking about the context. The context is not about our dispensation. But what you tell them is, just like during the tribulation, these people are going to be rewarded for their re outreach to prisoners. And so we're following that example. But, you know, it, it, it's like... Uh, we were talking about my people who are called by my name, if they'll humble themselves and pray, and I hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. That's not to you. That's not to, that's not to the United States of America. But, but, we can say that just as God promised that to the Jews, we do know that if this nation were to have a revival, then there would be improvements. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's not, you, I just, Always be careful about the context and, and accurate, but they then explain the application and there's no problem. Yeah. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, and thy house.